Make your choice. Brad, Ryan, and Dina are the first victims in Saw 3D. Trapped in a glass cube in a public space, they are about to fall victims to circular saws. As a quick fresh up for those of you who haven't watched the movie recently, Dina tricked both men into spending for her treats. What this means, she's basically a gold digger, and Jigsaw doesn't like gold diggers. She is toxic. There are two circular saws fixed on both ends of what seems to be mini rails. We have one character on each side with their hands chained onto the sliding device on both sides of each respective circular saw. Obviously they need to push the contraption towards each other in order to avoid getting sliced open as well as to attempt to slice open the other person. They have one minute time, if none of them fall victim to the game, Dina, hanging above, will get sliced in half instead. We can safely conclude that Dina has no way out of there without external help. Like I have mentioned in our Saw 6 video, being chained on both hands and feet is an incredibly powerful immobilization. However, it is true that when she moves, the trap weirdly wobbles along with her, giving the impression that she might be able to break the trap with enough forceful movements. But that's quite a leap of faith, so let's forget about her for now and focus on the device our two remaining characters are chained onto. Unfortunately, it looks like the leather straps on their wrists don't allow them enough space to have them being cut through by the saws themselves. We can also see that they are wearing something like leather belt chains on each side of their hip, connecting them to the device on both sides, not allowing them to either dodge the saws by moving to the sides, nor would it allow them to back off and dodge it with a nice fadeaway. Interestingly enough, those side chains are only attached to the overall they're wearing, meaning if you can find a way out of the overall, you can escape the restricting nature of those chains. To get out of the overall, you could for instance attempt to cut through the links on the front of the overall with the saw and then push your body up like you would on a dip bar. That way the chains attaching the device to the overall would pull the overall down themselves. However, to make this work, you need the help of your opponent, which in this case <laughs> doesn't look like a possibility. So let's move on and see what else we have here. In the first frames of this trap, for instance, we can see that none of the two guys have any chains on their feet, which is a huge advantage. So what I would do first is to try and pull out any of the cables underneath the device with my feet. As you can see, there is enough space to reach through with your legs and that way you have a good chance of interrupting the electric circuit and stop any of the saws from rotating. But whatever we can come up with here, everything is connected to a big if. So I truly believe the most reliable tactic to save all three victims here is to cause a power outage for the whole area. Since we have countless spectators watching, we have many people able to react and contact the right people in time to cause something like this to happen. What I mean is, electricity is typically distributed by distribution transformers to distribute transformed electricity to households and small businesses alike. You may have seen them around your neighborhood. Now for the sake of this uh, video, I have contacted a good friend of mine who is an actual electrician to ask him for advice if it would be possible to cause an actual outage through manipulation of such distribution transformers. And it turns out it really is. However, in any way, it is not simple and it does require some knowledge and access as well. I reckon that might not be the easiest way to save all the victims here, but it still is the most reliable way that we can come up with. Trap number two, sticky, sticky skin. As much as I enjoy seeing Chester again, he is definitely in a complicated situation here. I'm going to be straightforward with you, um, I really didn't find anything useful here, just tiny bits, but I don't think it's enough to beat this trap. So if you have any idea on how to beat this trap in particular, please consider leaving a comment down below. Hello heaven, I want to play a game. However, if I had to at least attempt to get out of there alive, then perhaps freeing my arms would be the smartest idea to begin with. Once your arms are free, try to activate the seat back adjuster usually on the side of each car seat. That way you can get at least a little bit closer to the lever you have to pull. Now, even if you get closer to the lever, I think it is still too far away to actually be able to pull it. Even if you try to stretch out your legs through the windshield, I just think there is not enough space for you to do that. 
but since Chester here is not wearing chains on his legs and we have freed our arms already, we might be able to take off our pants and throw them around the lever. Honestly, it could work, but it is attached to a big if again. So again, if you have a better idea, let me know. I'm burning for this one, honestly. Moving on to chapter 2, Bobby's Trial, test number 1. Now, in this series of tests, we follow Bobby. Now, I don't know what's up with this guy, but faking to be a Jigsaw victim in the very city where Jigsaw is still hunting people just in order to make some money is probably not the smartest idea. If you want to pull this up, you do it low key. At least have an alias. Don't show your face or whatever. If that can't be done, then you just must realize that you are literally putting the red dot onto yourself. Thanks for the signature. Nice picture. But hey, one man's fortune is another man's misery. So thank you very much, Bobby. Let's analyze your traps. Now, I will refrain from highlighting the first trap, the hanging cave trap, as he avoided it successfully by swinging over to the safe side. But truth be told, the spikes on the floor had enough space between them to be able to safely land without facing a real threat. Let's move on to this poor lady here. In this trap, Nina is strapped onto a chair with a straight jacket. Just the thought of wearing a straight jacket always freaks me out. Now imagine four metal posts threatening to pierce your throat additionally. Gruesome. But that's why we love the Saw franchise, right? Now, the key to release the trap is stuck in her tummy, but attached on a thin thread, allowing Bobby to pull it out. Hmm. I wonder what came first, David Blaine or this trap? But anyway, Additionally, we get to know that the louder the noise in this room, the faster she gets pierced by the machinery. So screaming here is a big no-no. However, she doesn't seem to be able to shut up. Can't really blame her though. So how would I beat this trap? Well, the posts are moved mechanically, which is always a great thing because it often allows the possibility of manipulation. What I mean is, the posts are moved by rotating bevel gears. So. If you can stop those gears from functioning properly, you can stop the posts from closing in. How would I block the gears? Just twist a piece of fabric and clamp it in between the gears. Of course, if you find a metal plate or anything else that is wide enough and stable and comparably soft, that would do it too. But as always, since you're attempting to beat those traps while hopefully wearing clothes, you may as well use what you wear. Generally speaking though, I would say if you can't find alternatives within this chamber, then spare your clothes for the next traps. You don't know what's coming next. Trap number three, the human wheel. Now, what is it with those throw traps in this movie? Anyway, this trap too involves spivel gears, so blocking them would suffice here as well to stop the wheel from spinning and therefore save Susanna a generous amount of pain. There are other ideas though how you might be able to save her. For instance, Bobby has to push up a lever to close an electric circuit that stops the wheel from spinning. So if you can block the lever in a way that it stays up there, that would also stop the mechanism from moving. If you are proficient in electrical engineering, then you might find another way to bridge the circuit. If you do, please enlighten us in the comment section down below. Get it? Enlighten us? Bridge the circuit? Anyone? Trap number 4, Test of Courage. This trap is a bit more fun to solve than the previous one. Although time might be a little scarce here, Bobby as well as Kale need to work together in order to save Kale from getting hanged. Basically, to save Kale, Bobby needs to secure the key hanging from the ceiling in the middle of the boardwalk. Since Kale is blindfolded, it is very risky for him to walk across. Even if they work together in complete harmony, which they definitely don't, finding balance while being blindfolded is a very difficult task. And the threat that if you misstep, you will fall into death is also not very encouraging here. If Kale must walk over the board though, I would advise him to take off his shoes and cross barefoot. You are much more sensitive that way, allowing you to really focus on where you step. This would translate not just into a more secure crossing, but also faster movement. However, in my humble opinion, Bobby should have taken the sole risk here. I mean, he's almost slower than Kale in crossing the boards. We can see that partly on his journey across, there is a metal grid where he could literally grab onto, which he doesn't use. Also, when he almost falls and jumps over to the crossing, we can see that it isn't really far away. 
I mean, if your friend is about to get killed, you might as well take a little bit more of risk. That was just pathetic in my opinion. So the best way to beat this trap, well, next to Bobby moving a bit quicker, I would say once Bobby has secured the key, Kale should have pulled his shirt in a way that causes it to resemble a pool into which Bobby could have thrown the key. Catching a key blindfolded in this situation is pure luck and I wouldn't recommend it. While it is still risky to throw this tiny key in any way, throwing it into a relatively large shirt pool is more likely to succeed. Even if the time ran out and Kale would get hanged up on his neck, it would take a few minutes at least until he would lose his consciousness. In fact, hanging someone doesn't kill that person immediately unless the string is attached in a way that would break that person's neck. And since Kale's hands are free as well, he is free to pull himself up on a string, which would cause a time delay that could be used to unlock his collar if time ran out. Chapter number 5 or trap number 5, Wisdom Tooth. Wisdom is Tooth. I didn't like this one. The last wisdom tooth I pulled was literally without sufficient anesthesia. It was quite unpleasant, I can tell you that. But I must say it isn't as terrible as some of the other traps people had to go through in the Saw series. But still, you want to generally avoid pulling your teeth on yourself without any narcotics, that is, unless you are Robinson Crusoe. Anyways, I wonder if I could do it if I were in his position to be honest. I mean, could you do it? Even if your loved one's life is on the line, some of the traps in the past few movies of the franchise would have been simply impossible to endure for me, even to save someone I love. Pulling two of your teeth is almost a catwalk in comparison. And if you can pull your own wisdom teeth at the same time, then well great, you just saved yourself a few hundred bucks. But let's get into this first. Although beating this trap is not possible without a stretch of imagination, I can tell you that much. So, since there isn't a mirror available, there is no way Bobby could somehow glimpse at the numbers engraved on his teeth. So there are only two ways here. Either make it out by touch, good luck with that, or guess the correct code. Hmm. Well, let's roll the numbers for a second. Bobby needs a four digit code that gives the possibility of 10,000 combinations, including four times zero. The code to unlock the door is 5693. If he were to go step by step with 0001, 0002, 0003 and so on, it would take quite some time to arrive at the right combination. If typing in a 4 digit code plus the subsequent waiting time is about 5 seconds long, he would precisely need 28,465 seconds or around 474 minutes to arrive at the right combination. At this point though, he only had roughly 19 minutes left leaves only figuring out the codes by touch, which is incredibly difficult especially since the inside of your mouth is moist and relatively warm, so feeling fine details in that environment is pretty difficult. If you had a needle or toothpick, would it make it easier since you could follow the fine lines with it? Maybe. With all of that stated, you may can come up with a different tactic to solve this trap. If you can, as always, consider leaving a comment. In this final test, Bobby has to overcome what he claimed he had already overcome before, which we all know from the start was a lie. I guess he visualized this scenario so hard for the sake of his book, there was no way it wouldn't happen. Okay guys, I know that Jigsaw mentions here that Bobby must pierce his chest, pull himself up and reconnect the cables, but perhaps we can do it differently. Obviously it is possible as we can see in the movie. Bobby does so relentlessly to my surprise. It's a shame he failed so close to success, but then again, we don't watch the Saw movies for their happy endings, do we? So technically speaking, if you can get up there differently, you wouldn't need to pierce your pectoralis. I know that is strictly forbidden by Jigsaw himself, but let's have a little fun here, alright? You will screw me anyways in the comments. So here is my uncreative idea. Step onto the hooks like you would step into stirrups, twist your arms around the respective chains for extra stability and pull yourself up on the third chain to get to the cables above. Up there you just connect the cables, et voila, that is French for you're good to go and your wifey doesn't need to burn to death in front of you. Amazing. Next one. 